Do not lead me to the will of my foes, O Lord, for false witnesses rise up against me, and they breathe out violence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant us so to celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's passion that we may merit to receive your pardon. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O islands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb, he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing, uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him, and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will sing of your salvation. I will sing of your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. I will sing of your salvation. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O oh my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I will sing of your salvation. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb you are my strength. I will sing of your salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice day by day, your salvation. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing of your salvation. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Reclining at table with his disciples, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified, Amen, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another at a loss as to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. After Judas took the morsel, Satan entered him. So Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now none of those reclining at table realized why he said this to them. Some thought that since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, Buy what we need for the feast, or to give something to the poor. So Judas took the morsel and left at once. And it was night. When he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. 
If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say it to you. Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, though you will follow later. Peter said to him, Master, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of Holy Week, other than the Lord, the name that comes up is Judas, Judas Iscariot. On Monday yesterday, we heard of Judas as the uh, appraiser, right? He's watching as Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, takes this costly perfume and pours it on the feet of Jesus, anointing him, maybe a foreshadowing of the anointing after death that happens to bodies, right? And Judas says, this could have been sold for a hundred days' wages. Why are we wasting it in such a way, right? Archbishop Fulton Sheen used to say, uh, you know, Judas Iscariot knew the cost of everything and the value of nothing. He didn't understand what it meant, what it represented. Like Father Michael said yesterday, that gift that she was giving, that came out in an exterior way in the, in the perfume, in the nard, but more importantly, it was about the gift that she gave herself, right? Tomorrow, we'll see Judas the negotiator, right? Because tomorrow in Matthew's Gospel, we'll hear him approach the temple officials and say, how much, how much is he worth to you? What do you, what do you give me, right? We know it'll be 30 pieces of silver, right? It's the cost of a slave, but we'll hear him in that way. So what do we have today? Today we have Judas the liar. In what way? Well, people didn't sit, and no matter what Leonardo da Vinci's very famous painting of the Last Supper shows us, people didn't sit at chairs and tables as we do today. Um, in the movie, uh, The Passion of the Christ, there's a little flashback during the Passion where uh, Jesus, the carpenter, shows Mary, his mother, this table, and, and she says, what would you use that for? It was foreign to them, the idea of sitting at table was not about something about waist high like we're used to. Tables were low. Think of it like a, an end table or a coffee table in a house. And what did they do? They didn't have chairs. So when they sat, they sat on cushions, big cushions, and they leaned. So it would have been, you sat on your left side, and you reached in, and this allowed you to reach for food feed yourself. No knives, forks, and spoons. So let's do a little, what would you call it, NCIS Jerusalem, right? What's happening on that Last Supper as we read the Gospel, right? When you were leaning, you were leaning side by side. So the person who was next to you with your head, head was about here. We hear that, you know, Jesus says, one of you will betray me. And uh, so we can see, you know, the beloved disciple, the one who Jesus loved. In John's Gospel, we believe it's John talking about himself. He's close enough. He must be to the right of Jesus, where Peter, who must be on the other side of John, leans over to John and says, ask him who it is. So John leans his head over. Who is it? And John gets the tell. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to show you. The one who I dip the bit of food, the bit of bread, the morsel into the, into the sauce and hand it to. And he hands it to the person on his left. And it's Judas, right? Now, in these customs, the one who sat on the left was the most honored guest. You put the guest of honor on the left. Why? Because the host would then, if he leaned his head around, would be on the breast, would be right next to that guest of honor. They would have such an intimate relationship. Jesus was giving Judas every chance to turn away from what he was going to do. He was giving him every moment. He was flattering him. He was honoring him, right? Even to say, even, even that external action of, of feeding the person, of taking a bit of bread and dipping it into a sauce and handing it to the person, was another way of showing honor. The other apostles must have been jealous, right? How come he gets to get that honored spot? But there it is. And then we hear the moment, though. At that very moment, when Jesus was putting on the hard sell to Judas, don't do it, don't do it, don't give in to the devil, we hear Satan entered. 
And Jesus recognizes, he did it in Peter, get behind me, Satan, and he says to Peter, when he says, you don't, you know, God forbid you should go to the cross. So Peter, uh, so John has, uh, John, one more time. So uh, Judas, the uh, devil has entered Judas, Jesus recognizes it, and he's, I've tried, I've done what I can, it's up to you, and you've chosen this. What you are about to do, get it over with, do it quickly, right? And then we get that line from John, and it was night. It's not just about what time of day it was. It's about the darkness inside of Judas, the despair, the frustration. You're not the Messiah we wanted. You're not the one, right? And so Judas runs off. The others think he's, you know, going off to do some act of kindness. He's going to take some of our money and give to the poor as they did at Passover. If they knew what he was going to do, James and John, the sons of thunder, would have stood at the door. You know, Judas never would have made it out the door to do this. But yet there goes John, uh, Judas, to go do this along the way. We get really two different people there because the rest of the gospel tells us, Peter says, you know, I'll be with you, Lord. We're not going to let you die. We're not going to let you go alone. I'll defend you. And of course, Jesus foreshadows, you, you will de deny me three times before morning, before the cock crows. Judas and Peter deny Jesus, right? The difference is, you know, Judas gives in to despair afterwards. Judas doesn't think forgiveness is possible. Peter does, and he weeps, and he laments. And tradition tells us that for the rest of his life, Peter had dark circles under his eyes where the tears had just worn away. He had cried so intensely for that. And so it's a reminder for us. We think our sins are too bad. We think we cannot change. We think we're stuck in our ways. We think that addiction or that habit or that attitude we have is not fixable. I can't change at this point. Jesus is there next to us saying, you can do it, do it. But he honors our free will, the gift we were given from God. He's not going to force us, right? It said the church doesn't impose, it proposes teachings. And the same for him. He leaves it to us, but we have to trust like Peter does, even if it means with tears and repentance that we can change. So today, we're there at that Last Supper. God, like Isaiah says in the first reading, wants to honor us, wants to call us a beloved son or a beloved daughter of his family. But we have to want it. We have to say yes. And he'll help us. He'll guide us. And if we fall, right, like Peter, we see later on, the Lord gives us the opportunity for forgiveness, to undo the knot we did. It's one of Pope Francis' favorite devotions. Our Lady and the undoer of a knot. Sometimes we've made some pretty tight knots in our life, and perhaps Our Lady has helped us to undo that knot, to make things straight again. We ask her again to continue to help us, to guide us. And we thank the Lord for the gift of his forgiveness, for his mercy. And that especially as we enter these days now, we learn from the lesson of Judas that even if we mess up, we turn to the Lord. We say, Lord, I love you. Forgive me. Trusting in the God who walks with us always, we bring our needs to the Lord and Savior. For all members of the church, may Christ strengthen us as we share the good news of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders and those who carry responsibility for the welfare of others, may Jesus guide them in the ways of servant leadership. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are struggling or suffering, may God's love and presence with them bring consolation and comfort. We pray to the Lord. For all of us, may God open our hearts more fully and increase our faith in him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to this pandemic, for healing for those who are ill, and for guidance and strength, wisdom to those who are caring for our sick. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they rest in the loving presence of God. We pray to the Lord. For Ronald Lee and for Carmen Zapula, for whom this mass, these masses are being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord God of love and tenderness, we know that you carry us in our struggles. Hear our prayers today and give us all we need to do your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but for your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work with human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably, O Lord, we pray, on these offerings of your family, and to those who make partakers of these sacred gifts, grant a share in their fullness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of God. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, take, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. mercy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. God did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you have fed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Reminder that today, Tuesday, April 7th, the church will be open uh, following Mass now until 7 p.m. with exposition of the Blessed Sacrament from 12 noon to 3 p.m. When you come in, please just be aware of distancing, sit apart, uh, big church, lots of pews, uh, keep yourself uh, safe. The Lord be with you. Yes, yes. Bow your heads for the blessing. May your mercy, O God, cleanse the people that are subject to you from all seduction of former ways and make them capable of new holiness through Christ our Lord. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.